Hi everyone, I'm going to be discussing contribution break-even chart, which is slightly different from the break-even chart as I mentioned earlier. Uh, initially, I will discuss with you single product aspect, and uh, then I will highlight how multiple product aspect could also be added. We will be using a similar example which we have earlier used in our calculation. So if you can quickly recall, uh, if you can quickly recall the numbers which we discussed earlier, we discussed a selling price of ten dollars, a variable cost of seven, contribution of three, budgeted sales of five thousand units, and our fixed cost we assumed as nine hundred nine thousand. Okay, so say we have sales on one side of the diagram sales in terms of units and we have the amounts on one side of the diagram here uh, as 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 our total amount of sales revenue variable cost or total cost okay so starting point that we need to pick as is how many units we have so assuming uh, our budgeted sales is five uh, 5,000 units and if we will split it on the diagram here so let's say this is where we have 1,000 units 2,000 3,000 4,000 and 5,000 and sales revenue could be the highest possible amount so let's consider uh, that we have selling price of 10 5000 units so total sales revenue would extend up to 50000 okay so let's say that this is where we have 50000 and this is where we have 25,000 37,500 and 12,500 Now, if production and sale is zero, what we will have, we will have a loss which will be exactly equal to our fixed cost, which is approximately going to be here. So this is what we have as our fixed cost and we can draw one straight line which will represent the amount of fixed cost that if we will produce and sell 5,000 units, this will be our fixed cost, okay? But uh, in the contribution break-even chart, we don't need to present that in this way. Uh, we will present it in a slightly different way. So now we will consider our uh, total cost, which is including the variable cost, okay? So variable cost in total we have is 35,000. So if we will add this amount of variable cost to our fixed cost, the total cost would turn out to be 44,000, which will be approximately here. Okay, so after producing and selling a total amount of uh, units of 5,000, we will be incurring a total cost approximately here of uh, 44,000. So when I will consider this from a cost of 9,000 and adding further 35,000 to it, so it means that my total cost will be over here on the diagram. So this is my total cost okay and uh, now i will present my variable cost the main difference as i said there is slight difference the main difference is that here variable cost will be presented separately originating from zero same the case with sales revenue because both are similar in nature sales is also variable in nature uh, selling price per unit is assumed to be constant and variable cost also has the same thing variable cost per unit is also assumed to be constant and it is incurred as 
and when we produce our first unit, if production and sale is zero, the variable cost is also zero. So it should better be presenting it from the origin. This is what we are going to do. So because total uh, variable cost is 35,000, which is approximately here. So if I have to present my variable cost separately on the diagram for 5,000 units, it should extend up to here approximately, okay? So let's take this uh, because variable cost, as we said, it will uh, be considered as coming up from the origin. Okay, so this this line is basically presenting my variable cost. Okay, and this area on the diagram as a whole is presenting my variable cost, and this area on the diagram as a whole is presenting my fixed cost. Okay, this this. Uh, margin between these two lines, if you can see, is always same, which indicates that fixed cost always remains same. So this area on the diagram is basically presenting your fixed cost. And this area here presents our uh, variable cost. So now we will also go on and present our sales revenue. Our sales revenue in total, as we discussed earlier, after selling 5,000 units at a selling price of $10, our total sales revenue is 50,000 for the sales volume of 5,000. And it will be considered and uh, presented in the similar way as we did for the variable cost. So this is uh, how I can present my sales revenue. So this is the amount of sales revenue. Now we should further consider our break-even point and margin of safety. So as we discussed earlier, that our, uh, what do you call, uh, break-even point, uh, we can simply look at our break-even point. Uh, break-even point is basically where total cost and revenue is equal. So this is, th this is that point. This is that point uh, where we have our break-even point over here. Okay, so you can trace this down towards your x-axis uh, and I guess it is going to give us the exact answer since we have the better margins now. So this calculation of uh, break-even point we have discussed earlier in, in one of the presentations. If you don't remember, break-even point is equal to fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. So if I look at my fixed cost, that is 9,000. If I look at my contribution per unit, it is three. If I look at my break-even point, it is 3,000 units, okay? So this is what you can see in the diagram also. We have a break-even point at 3,000, and then you can extend this on y-axis as well. You can get your break-even point here in terms of sales revenue as well. If you talk about the margin of safety, margin of safety is the difference between budgeted sales and break-even sales. So this is your area on the diagram in terms of units. And here, sorry, here in terms of, uh, here we have our sales revenue, uh, our break-even, sorry, margin of safety in terms of dollars as well on y-axis in with respect to amount, okay? So, uh, where is the profit and loss? Let's now have a look at that one. As we said earlier, that when total sales line, the sales line is above the total cost line, it means revenue is higher, cost is less. So this area on the diagram would be presenting the amount of profitability. This one we have already uh, discussed. This, the other area, this one is representing our fixed cost. Okay, this one is presenting our profit. Uh, and this area on the diagram where total cost is less and total sales revenue is more, this area on the diagram is presenting our loss, okay? And why it's called contribution break-even chart that by adding the amount of fixed cost and uh, profitability, we can even determine the amount of contribution. So in this diagram, same like the profit volume chart, if we add fixed cost and profit, we can get the total contribution. So if you will, if you want to, you know, interpret this, or if you want to answer with the help of diagram, you have to tell the examiner from the diagram that how much is, with, without having the numbers, you have to look at this diagram, that how much is the amount of fixed cost. Okay, you can see that, as I have mentioned earlier, this is the amount of fixed cost. And how much is the profit here? You can trace this, these two lines towards X axis and you can find out your amount of profitability as well. And uh, 
the difference between these two, if you will take, it will be the total amount of profit. So plus fixed cost total will be the amount of contribution. This is, this is how you will be asked in the exam. So, same diagram can also be presented with respect to multiple products. As I said, if you will assume a constant mix, it will follow linear pattern, linear uh, directions as we have shown in the single product as well. But if you will uh, assume a, a highest ranking CS ratio first is produced and sold uh, one product and then another one, then the linear pattern may not remain same. It, it will not remain same because the CS ratio will be different and it will follow a different path. So uh, this is what we have just uh, ending. Uh, this topic I will just want to add because it is also part of our syllabus guide that what are the limitations of CVP analysis. In order to understand the limitations of CVP analysis, we need to look at the assumptions. Starting when I started the lecture, uh, this topic, I discussed the assumptions uh, of CVP analysis that selling price per unit will be assumed to be constant, variable cost per unit will be assumed to be constant, uh, fixed cost and total will be assumed to remain same, production is equal to sale, no inventory. But actually, these assumptions may not hold true. Even we did not consider step fixed cost and semi-variable cost. Okay, so actually the scenario can be different. Actually, the selling price may change. Actually, the variable cost may even change. Actually, the fixed cost may even step up. So for analysis purpose, yes, we are assuming these uh, aspects will remain constant or same, but actually they can change. So if they will change, that means actually the break-even point could be somewhere else not at what we calculated in our uh, analysis and planning part. So this is what we have to take account for. We, you know, kind of a what if analysis that what if uh, the prices, variable cost and fixed cost will change, how it will impact our break even point. So this is what we have comprehensively covered this topic, CVP analysis. Uh, and uh, moving on, next topic we will be covering on pricing decision. Okay, so that's what we have.